Okay, so today we are going to be talking about ads. Um, I've got out here some of the ones that we sell. I've also got some out here just from a collection that I kind of use and that I work with. My primary uh, angle of this video is going to be on inside bevel versus uh, outside bevel. And what I want to go ahead and do, I'll go ahead and run through just a few of these to let you all look at them. And then we're going to go ahead and get into that. And I'm actually going to put some of these on wood so that you can see maybe where some of the differences are. I think a lot of people get confused by that. We get a lot of questions and a lot of different ideas. Um, so I've got Mueller. Uh, all, let's see, these three are going to be different ideas on the Mueller ads. These are kind of those traditionally probably seen as a lot. Uh, ox or the different uh, Austrian and European, Eastern European uh, ads. Is, they are still hand forged. They're still out of Austrian steel, but they are a little bit more of their production models, maybe you would say. Um, what, what you will notice on those is primarily a lot of those are going to be your inside bevel. And you can see this is one of their larger ones. That's also going to be an inside bevel. Now, they also have their what they call their French design here. Once again, it's going to be your inside bevel. Um, they offer those in, you can see, steeper arcs, three different arcs. So I don't necessarily know if those would all be uh, counted as uh, gutter ads, uh, but they're not quite straight. Even the straightest one is not quite straight definitely is going to have the inside bevel. But not only are we talking about, the, say, the inside bevel, but we're also going to be talking about all of our bevels. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on. So I've got um, the only thing that I have out here that we sell that we don't currently have in stock is actually the Mueller, what they call their Swedish, the classic S Swedish uh, design. And it's very similar to some of these other ones. It's going to have the outside bevel. And uh, that is really what distinguishes some of these other ads is from maybe some of these more production ones. We also have a Stubai here, and that's a good quality ads as well. Austrian steel, you can see maybe just a little bit more production also, uh, but still forged and uh, not just, not just uh, mass produced. So it's going to have that inside bevel as well. Let me go ahead and just pull out a couple of these to look at um, that we don't sell, and then I'm gonna to get to those. So this right here is gonna be just one for my collection, kind of cool. It's got the outside bevel. Got this one right here, a little bit wider. Again, outside bevel. Um, got these two far over here on the left. These are gonna be kind of just cool ones to look at. The, uh, once again, that was outside bevel. This one right here is kind of a cross. It's kind of got inside bevel and outside bevel. It's very rough, very small little thing. Um, okay, now, the ones that I'm gonna be focusing on a lot to deal with the difference between the inside and outside bevel, we've got the Seven Pines Forge um, bull ads here. So this is gonna be his more standard model. Uh, it's got, um, and then he's got his, like what he would call maybe spoon or smaller one and it's actually forged out of stainless steel, which is a little bit different. Okay, let me go ahead and go ahead and come over to a block of wood and I'm gonna bring a couple of these. I'm gonna bring primarily one of these, um, bring this Mueller maybe, and then these two seven pines because this is what we're gonna really focus on is the difference between the inside bevel and the outside bevel. So some people are even confused uh, with what I'm referring to on the inside versus outside bevel. So as you can see, the grind right here, you've got, uh, you've got your arc, and then it drops off, and this is your bevel. Primarily, it would be called, say, a straight bevel on the inside, although it's very rare for you to have always a perfectly straight um, grind. So on this one specifically. Uh, here you've got, on this Mueller, you definitely, it's definitely showing a little bit more of that inside bevel. See, once again, you're coming along fairly straight, even though it's a little bit of an arc, then it drops away. So that's your bevel. So this is an inside bevel versus your outside bevel. Now, why does that make a difference? And before I go ahead and get fully into that, I also want to touch on, all right, what a lot of people are forgetting is in woodworking, you're dealing with bevels so much. So we think of that primary cut bevel 
and of course you can have even a secondary like your very your final cup bevel and a lot of times you you may have that some people of course uh, i refer to it more of say maybe like a scandy grind although usually I, I will leave maybe you know an arc on there but anyways i'm not going to go into all that that's a personal preference and you're going to have to go with that but there's another basically it's a large bevel or an arc and it needs to be considered when you're say making a bowl so this this is what i'm talking about it's the whole head of your axe or of the abs and it's going to determine how much you can get into and i'll actually pull one of my bowls out i don't have one that i've been working on with the ads but i've got one with uh from my lathe and i'll show that later in the video how really important that is because when you kind of get in you're almost following this this uh, curve and so that does make a gigantic difference let me go ahead and pull i'll show i'll show you exactly what i mean so i've got one of these other ones so literally look at the difference in in this you can get in well I'll go ahead and pull that out. That will just show it. Let me go ahead and talk about these inside and outside bevels. So where this becomes important is one might think, okay, if I've got my outside bevel, literally when I'm taking a bite and I'll take a bite, it's gonna make a fairly clean. So you're getting your clean because it's straight on the outside or straighter on the outside. So you're getting a fairly clean cut. So you can say, well, that's gonna be fairly, you know, But here is where we're really going to, I'm going to show you what, what we're looking at here. Okay, so that does make fairly clean cuts and you can see but I don't get much extra cutting going on. And what I mean by that is watch what I can do with this one. If I kind of, I can almost rock because I've got my bevel here. So when you hit, see I've got, if I'm getting in deeper, especially you'll be able to see, I can rock because I've got extra space right up here. Let me see if I can stick one of these so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. All right, see, so I can rock this out, but literally when I go to rock it, there's no extra leverage there. See, it's straight. And so this gives me a little bit more ability. Can rock and chip. Now this is an old piece of actually a heart, heart nut tree. And so this is not really a good example for what I'm trying to do here. But see, you can almost get a rock to it. Now where this becomes even maybe more important is when you're working with the grain because you're getting into the grain, you can kind of rock it out and you can get some of your smoother cuts in there. It also allows you to get, to create maybe a sharper bevel. So if you're working maybe in a shallower pan, but you can still get maybe into a tighter area. My technique is not necessarily that great. If I was actually working on this from the very start, I would be roughing a little bit more. And like I said, this is a dry piece of heart, heart nut. Okay, so primarily for my bowl, see, you can see if I'd have my technique, I'd kind of be pecking at it. Okay, now, when I get in here with the flat, with my inside bevel, see, I just can't chip that out quite the same way. It's just is not gonna chip, chip it out in the same way. Now, is there a right and a wrong for that? No, a lot more of it is gonna be your personal preference. Now, I also want to say, I've not sharpened any of these, and a lot of these blue ads that are coming out of Europe, and it doesn't matter the brand, whether it's the Mueller, whether it's the, the Ox, the Geodor, however, you know, they're all going to be, uh, or most of them are gonna need, you're gonna basically be finishing these to whatever you prefer. So that's, that's really um, gonna be 
a non-issue. But this one right here, I have not honed it, I've not sharpened it. You can see it's fairly roughly ground and that's just the nature of the beast. Your higher end ads, like your Seven Pines, okay, they're gonna come in a little bit sharper um, and that's really gonna, gonna help you out. All right, now, if the camera can kind of smooth in here a little bit, you can almost see, see on this stroke right here, it was almost that little bit of a curve there. So when you're working into the bottom of your bowl, this outside bevel allows you a little bit more leeway in that. Now that being said, that can create a nice smooth, smooth action here, but at the same time, your outside bevel, okay, if, if I really get into the outside bevel, I'm trying to get, actually working at an awkward angle, trying to get where the camera can see, all right, So see, it can actually make a very, very, very smooth cut. And I don't want to overemphasize this because some of what is the issue is check between the two different designs on these, you've got much more of an arc and a shorter blade here so you can get into the tight spots. So just keep that in mind. There's not really a perfect, uh, say the inside bevel to me, more important than that is the size of bowl you're going to be making or the trough that you're gonna be making because literally the length of your, of your head the angle from right here to right here, your bevel here, all that is determining the size of the bowl that you can make. Because once again, you're following, this is almost like a bevel angle, like a secondary bevel angle. And literally, it's very hard because if you think about, okay, I'm working into this little small bowl, I can never get my blade down here where I'm working along my bevel. So when I'm roughing this bowl out here, you can see, literally I kind of come in here, go down, I'd be working down, I'm working that bevel. And so that's determining a lot of what I can do. If I get to where, okay, I can't follow that bevel anymore, then literally I'm just like pucking, I'm, I'm pick, pecking away here right here, and I'm gonna end up with a much rougher finish, and of course wood tear out and all that. Let me go ahead and grab, I'm gonna put you on hold, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a bowl and show you even more before I let you go. I'm, but I'm also going to just address a little bit of the sharpening issues between the two. I'm gonna be doing a follow-up video in uh, maybe a couple months on the actual techniques and some of the products for sharpening the inside bevels, because a lot of people have questions about that as well. But let me go ahead and grab one of those bowls. All right, so I've got a, one of my lathe turn bowls here, and you can see. So if I'm working down in here, I've actually got two of them. If I'm working down in here with one of these ads, you can see my limiting factor, even on this one, the straight walls versus the arc right here at the bottom, I'm gonna really be getting into trouble, even with this small ads here. So um, that is a big thing to consider got one of these mid-sized Mueller's, you know, you're running into even more of that. So as you're working, as you'll be working in there, you kind of be coming around, working around, and this inside bevel, if you can see, that really gives you the ability to almost kind of work in here and kind of peck around. So that's a simplified version. I feel like I made it more complicated, but that's the basic just between the inside and the outside bevel. And when you get to the inside, here, you can see especially we're having that secondary bevel. You can not only get the smaller area, but you can also give it that little bit of a rock. If I can show you, if your camera can kind of zoom in here just a little bit more, and I might take a little peck on here. Okay. See, I don't want to take a whole lot on this bowl, but I can literally See, and I can rock it out, and I rock that chip out. So, hope this help, helps somebody. Check out this again. I'll go ahead and show uh, probably what most people, this has got Ted Ferringer, blacksmith on the handle. It's a Seven Pines Forge. He didn't have his stamp on the head. That's gonna be his smaller bowl ads. Um, I've got his uh, larger or, or standard one here. Once again, keep in mind, 
well, that where we're looking at is you know even with this larger one it's got a little bit tighter bend down here so you can kind of reach in here of course that's still going to be too big for that one and i will for sake of having it here might as well show just a tad Okay, so now onto the sharpening. So the basic idea is that on these, uh, on the outside bevels, more or less, you're basically just honing the outside. That's like you're working on any, any knife blade, only you just have the added uh, dimension of going to the outside. Um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I was going to go ahead and get to sharpening some of the inside of the bevel, but I'm going to go ahead and close this video out and we'll just address that on another video. As you can see, that would be kind of tight to sharpen in there. So that's another story. It's not complicated whatsoever. A dowel with um, some sandpaper on it is all that you really need to do. So check out our website. We've got the Seven Pines Forge ads. Try to keep them in stock. We've also, like I said, probably one of my next favorites for as far as bowls is the Mueller uh, Classic Swedish. I'll do a video on that later as well. Check out our website, wisemantrading.com. Uh, God bless y'all, and we'll see you in the next video.